Hello, and welcome to my series on building a square drop trailer. I don't know anything about square drop trailers. I don't know anything about trailers at all. I'm a chiropractor by trade. However, I have the ability, or somewhat of the ability, to draw a trailer. And that's what I started with. I use this drawing to get an idea of the materials needed to build this trailer. That includes everything from wheels, tires, suspension, siding, doors, windows, and to start with, the metal framing. There are two steel supply companies within equal distance of my house, Cormark Metals and Midway Iron. I did use both companies for this project. Matter of fact, I think Cormark Metals might supply Midway Iron with some of their steel, but I could be wrong. Either way, if I were you, I'd call around and do a price comparison. Most of the tubing comes in 24 foot lengths. I was able to have them cut it in half so I could load it in the van and then drive it home. For the majority of the frame tubing, I was able to use a two inch by two inch square tubing, 11 gauge. For the center spine of the trailer, I went with a little bit thicker steel. I chose a 3 16 inch. In hindsight, I think this was overkill. It just added extra weight and I'm not sure if it gave it any extra strength. Here I'm lifting and positioning that heavy center spine piece. I went with a 14 foot length on this one. I wasn't sure the exact length when I purchased the steel. I ended up cutting off about a foot and a half or so of it. The front of the trailer will have a receiver to accept an off-road hitch. I'm just putting it here to keep everything organized. And now the build officially begins with my first cut. This piece will be the very rear of the trailer. Each end will be mitered at 45 degrees. I'm just using a cheap chop saw I got from Arbor Freight with a coupon. The bad thing about this saw is that the platform is not very big and you have to make sure that the metal is perfectly square in it before you cut either end, otherwise your 45 degree miter will be slightly off. I did the exact same thing with the passenger side frame rail, mitered both sides, carried it over and set it in place. I repeated this process on the driver's side frame rail, making sure that this cut piece was the exact same as the passenger side frame rail. And then I continued on, cutting all the smaller pieces needed to make the body of the trailer frame nice and square, things like ribs and gussets. For the neck of the trailer, I chose not to do any math. Instead, I just took a piece of steel, laid it on top, and drew some lines about a rough idea of where the cut should be made. It turns out this was a mistake. It took a couple extra cuts and a little bit extra grinding to make sure that both pieces were exactly the same. Some of these angles are a little bit too sharp for my cheap chop saw, so I used an angle grinder and just cut it by hand. Now that everything is cut, it's time to start packing it together and I need all the help I can get when it comes to welding. I'm definitely not a welder. In fact, most of my knowledge of welding comes from watching YouTube videos. And one of the things I've learned is that each joint should have a beveled edge to allow more room for the welding bead. And that's what I'm doing here with the grinder and the hand file. I also learned that the metal should be very clean on each bathing surface. And here I'm using some mineral spirits to clean up the edge. And then I continued this process through every piece of metal to make sure each one had a beveled and a clean edge. And now the pieces are ready to be tacked together. But before I do that, I have to make sure everything is perfectly level. And I did this a couple different ways. The first way is I put some masking tape around the center spine, drew some lines right down the middle, and then I used a laser level to make sure that it was perfectly straight. And in more simple ways, I just use a regular level and just check the bubble on it from time to time. And now that the center beam is level, we have to make sure that the trailer will be perfectly square. I achieved this by drilling a small hole at the center of the neck of the trailer. And then I inserted a drywall nail into this hole. And I used the head of the nail on my tape measure to go back and forth from left to right. You might have noticed in the previous scenes that I used some metal shims in the front here, one on the passenger side rear and one on the driver side rear to help make sure everything is level. Now for a big moment in the trailer build, ready to tack together the first two pieces. And 
then after a couple tacks were put in place, I double checked everything. I used that nail trick in the front to make sure that this rear bar is perfectly square to the center spine. The next front to the driver's side frame rail. I used a framing square and some magnets to hold everything nice and straight. I also checked the level using a digital angle finder. Made sure everything was straight and level before putting my first pack into this piece. Now on to the next piece. This piece actually forms a rectangle on half the trailer. We can do cross diagonal measurements to make sure that they're the exact same. And after we're happy with the exact placement of this piece, we go ahead and tack it in just like we did the other one. And moving along, we'll do the passenger side frame rail next. Same thing, use a framing square. Make sure everything is perfect, using magnets and shims to hold things in place, and taking many measurements before putting our first tack in. And now that the body of the trailer looks like a rectangle, I can take cross diagonal measurements before finishing tacking the rest of it in. Then I moved on to the neck of the trailer using the exact same techniques, using shims, magnets, levels, anything I can to make sure it's perfectly square before putting the first couple tacks in. I would take breaks every now and then and just remeasure. I'd use that nail trick to make sure everything stayed square even though I'm adding heat with the welder. I suppose now would be a good time to talk about the welder. Well, it's nothing fancy. I had a coupon from Arbor Freight, so that's what I got. It's the cheapest welder they had that uses 240 volts. And some of the accessories I got for it was a welding cart from Arbor Freight, uh, the little gas flow meter, and then the gas I actually get from a local hardware store where they have an exchange program. I've never used a high-end welder, so I wouldn't know the difference between that one and this one. In the meantime, I'm enjoying using this one. And here I am putting tacks all around the trailer, making sure not to put too much heat into one spot. After finishing the tacks on one side, I wanted to flip it over so I could tack the other side before doing any finishing weld. It's a little heavy and awkward, but I was able to flip it over by myself. It was either the heat from the welds or me flipping it over that caused the frame to be slightly out of square. However, I was able to fix this by using a ratchet strap and then remeasuring to make sure it was back in square. Next, I went around the trailer and I was able to put tacks in every spot that didn't have a tack. And now that it's all tacked together, I wanted to get it off the ground just to save my back a little bit while I did all the finish welding. And here's a good view of the trailer frame ready to be finish welded. I started in the back corners for a couple reasons. Number one, I wanted to make sure that if I messed up, these are the places that are least likely to be seen. And two, I want to use these gusset pieces to help hold things square. And then I continue this process around the trailer frame in random areas to try to avoid any warpage that could happen. I got lucky, the trailer stayed nice and square the entire time and not being an experienced welder, I had to tip it up on its side to allow gravity to help my welds look a little better. And speaking of good looking welds, I just ground off some of my better welds. Uh, these are the surfaces that'll be seen. I wanted a nice smooth flush finish from on all the angles. And it wasn't just the smooth corners that'll be seen when it's done that I ground off. I also ground off the very top of the trailer. This is the part where the cab will be sitting on and I wanted a nice smooth flush finish for it. After all, that is the main purpose of building in the square frame so that we can mount things to it. The cab is one of the main components that we mounted this frame. 
But there's other very important things too, things like suspension, brakes, wheels, lights, tongue jacks, front hitch, the rear receiver, fenders, brush guards, tongue boxes, and the list goes on. In the next video of this series, you'll see me mount the most important part of that list, the suspension and axles. And here I'm flipping it over and getting it ready for the suspension. Stay tuned for the next video where we install the Timberin Axle-less Suspension.